imposter syndrome and mum guilt with women in a state agency. Wow, big topic that one, it Emma. It is a big deal, isn't it? Okay, joined today by Emma Alban, who is an uh, ex-state agent and now runs her own outsourced uh, sales progression firm called Prime Progression. Emma, what do you mean by imposter syndrome and mum guilt? Talk to me. I think they oh, sort of coming at you all angles, isn't it? Imposter syndrome and mum guilt. Yes. Um, I think imposter syndrome does affect all people in some way and at some uh, point. Men, women, I've, yeah. we've had them on that sofa. Um, you know, some of the biggest names in the estate agency industry, they all suffer from it in some shape or form. Yeah. yeah. It's awful, really, when you get down to it. And I think a lot of people just think, oh, it's a bit of anxiety. And, um, but it's not. It's, it's huge self-doubt. And it's awful, Abs an absolute awful feeling. Um, I've had it in starting up my own business. And you kind of think, oh, well, I've got all this freedom and I can make my own decisions and I can do whatever I like. Okay. But there is still so much influence around you that it just gives you that impression that you can't. Do you want to, should we talk about both separately or do you think there's a link between the two? I think there's a link between the okay, two. Well, let's start off with imposter syndrome. Um, what imposter syndrome did you have and how do you deal with it? So the imposter syndrome I had was, I had all this drive, experience, knowledge, but going into a state agency was really difficult. I went into, when I first started, I went into a completely male orientated offices and um, we had three offices and I was the only female. Um, Which is quite rare in a state agency because more, more likely it tends to be more female. Yes, well this was 18 years ago. Okay. So I think we have come a long way um, and still so much more to grow. But when I went in, um, I had fear of picking up the phones and they just, I don't know, it's just like how you've... It's how I, things I thought I was not, rather than focusing on what I knew I was. Um, and I think that's where it can get a little bit muddied for you and then you do get that fear and the anxiety. Okay. Well, that was 18 years ago. How, how could you convert that from, from basically a woman setting her own business up? I mean, again, you would have, I'm assuming you'd have had uh, imposter syndrome setting that up, but how, you must have, uh, slain some dragons to get to the point to say I want to start my own business. How did you do that? Okay, yes. Yeah. So, uh, gosh, about four or five years, five years ago now, one of my then bosses said, had a one-to-one -one meeting with me and he said to me, tell me five great things about yourself. And I had none. I couldn't tell him a single thing. And in that moment, I realised how little I must have really thought of myself that you didn't love yourself? That I just didn't believe that I had great qualities to bring to what my day-to-day -day job was. Um, and I thought, gosh, has that, I hadn't even noticed, has that chipped away over all those years, 25, so 13 years, 25 years ago, having this conversation? It was a real wake-up for me, actually. And I think I like just, I don't know, a switch just flicked and I just suddenly thought, I'm going to come back to you. And I went away and I did a little bit of work on myself and I came back and I, I could have been off more than five. <laughs> and I was so proud of myself and that was a real, real shift. And don't get me wrong, from that time in between then and now, I have almost certainly gone back and this imposter has just been niggling in my ear and I have felt that you can't do this. Someone's going to find out that you when did you this. When did you start your own firm? A year ago. So do you think this came back because you started your own firm? No, it came back when I was made redundant at the beginning of COVID. So did you, you were made redundant. Did you, did, was that the catalyst that started your, your outsourcing firm for sales progression? No, because it put me in a real low of, um, I lost all confidence. Okay. Um, I probably went back to not really sure about those, those great things about me um, because suddenly other people didn't believe in those things about me because okay. I was, okay. my role was made redundant. But that was not personal against you. I mean, I've been, no. <laughs> I've been made redundant twice and, I, and again, it really does hate you. Yes. Like no one loves me. Of and, course. So, okay then. But I knew, it's but that how, moment, but I knew it wasn't. So I had to come out uh, of that. So how did you get out of that? So I took on a job back in doing what my skill set was, um, in, but I went into outsourcing. 
for another another outsourcing firm. Um, and I thought, hang on, I'm really good. I am really good at this. And so I came back out of that. I'm so grateful for my the outsourcing experience because that was what really spurred me on and gave me some knowledge to understand more about the outsourcing world. So you took a job on in outsourcing and it made you realize that you, you found your mojo that you could actually do it yourself. Mm -hmm. I bet your boss at the outsourcing firm wasn't too too happy, but there you go, that's life. No, it? they weren't. And and I, I briefly, um, I knew I didn't want to work in that firm anymore. And I, I went back and dipped back into an agents and did out um, sales progression directly within an agency um, for a year, just under a year. And during that time, I had several conversations with ex-colleagues that are very close friends now. Mm -hmm. And she, she said to me, what on earth are you doing? Get your own outsourcing business set up. You are so good for this. You have to do it. Mm. And I said, do you think, do you think I could, and had these conversations and I was like, I'm just going to do it. I rang her a week later. I said, I've not stopped thinking about what you said. I'm going to do it. So this friend of yours put, a, put an idea, a seed of an idea in your mind. Yes. So again, there's a huge top tip for you boys and girls is, is surround yourself with great people. Yes, and listen to them. That sometimes, because of imposter syndrome, sometimes you just can't see what others can. And I, I don't think I would have, with you. yeah. I mean, we've got from a half an hour together. Thank you. <laughs> so you started the firm, but surely you'd had imposter syndrome still. You, oh, oh my goodness, yes. Okay. I mean, set it first of all, setting up a business. Well, I've never done this ever before. Okay. So, but, but you I had to ride a bike when you, were, when you were. No, exactly. And do you know what I did? I got help. Okay. Same as you do when you're learning to ride a bike. I got help, again, from people I really look up to, people I respect, friends and ex colleagues. And they really supported me greatly through that starting up. Um, and I was, well, I was absolutely buzzing to get going. And then, of course, we entered into this year and it's like, oh gosh, this is really unknown. And, but I kept such a strong focus on my values in growing that business. Do you, a, a lot of fear that people, I had it when I set up my own business with my wife and is that the fear of the unknown does it do, and the fact that you, you know, but does that, is that getting any better? You know, the fact is that you're not, you don't know what the hell, where the hell you're going to be in six months. You just keep plowing on. Yeah, it does. Because I, I write down, I take action. That has really helped me. Um, I think having those affirmations that, you know, five years ago that my then boss had asked me for and I didn't have. I, I have new ones all the time. I make sure there are new ones. I make sure I... I repeat my growth, um, so I see how far I've come. Yeah, that's really important, boys and girls, is, is look down the mountain. Yeah, it's, we're all very good looking at mm. how, where we've got to go, but look down where you come from. Yeah, Big oh one. my God, 100%. I'm so grateful for the whole journey, and some of it was really hard, um, but I'm so, it's all a part of where I am today. If I hadn't experienced those things, I, I wouldn't be as fortunate as I am now. Let's move on the conversation to mum guilt. So what, what kids have you got? I've got a daughter, she's nine. Okay. Yeah, and um, she's absolutely incredible. Um, I might say that I had lost a, a baby previous to her, so she's all the more special to me. And, but I really love working, and it was always my intention to return to work. And I love a state agency. There's so much in there for me. And I had my daughter and I returned to work full time when she was five months old. So, but I left her in great hands. I felt very confident in making that decision at the time. Um, but I was commuting, um, sort of 30 odd miles a morning and night. Um, not too far, but still not just around the corner if my five month old baby needed me. So it was a little bit of apprehension, but I knew it was the right thing for us all. I took on my role back and at the time I wasn't sales progressing um, or I was doing sales progression but I was still selling as well so it was you know long hours I was working weekends as well at the time but I managed to convince my then boss to create a purely sales progression role for me I knew it's where my passion was I knew it's what I was good at I could go out and sell houses but I'd actually spend more time doing sales progression than I was selling houses you could make more money out of me doing that so we, it took me a whole five months but I convinced him and I created the role and I took a salary cut in order to work from home doing it. 
so that I had a little bit more flexibility and was closer to my daughter. When was this? What year was this? This was in 2013, 2014, no, 2014. Working from home in 13, 14. Yes. Wow, we, well. Yes, and so I have ever since. So COVID was just like normal mm. to me. <laughs> and um, I didn't have much adjusting to do. But yeah, working from home, which was great. I mean, she wasn't home with me. She's a baby, but it just meant I was closer. I Who was looking her. after her? She was in um, childminder and then nursery. So, yeah. Was your partner supporting you at the time? Yes. You know, we're a really good close-knit family unit, um, the three of us. But he also ran his own business. Um, he's a gas engineer. So he was out, um, you know, sometimes long hours, sometimes evenings. Um, but we managed and it was, it was brilliant. There was a spell in 2017, 2018, where I had to commute. I come out of home working, signed up to commute to, to Mayfair every day. Wow. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but I knew it was really important for my growth and I knew I needed that experience. It was agreed that it was only for a short time. I think I did it about six months. Um, but I commuted and I helped out another business. Um, like we have a secondment kind of arrangement. And I commuted there every day. So what I arranged with my employer, and it, they were actually really good and flexible, which was lovely and refreshing to see because I'd worked for employers in the past that were not so flexible. And they either let me come in later so I could do the drop-off for nursery, or they let me... Um, leave earlier so I could do the pickup. So I'd, I'd make up my hours, but it just meant I got to be a little bit present. Okay, so you need flexibility from your bosses. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with the guilt, the fact is that you're jumping on a train to Mayfair all the time? Oh God, it's horrible. And it was through the winter, so it just felt permanently dark and miserable. Okay. Uh, and it was hard, and she was four. Okay, answer the question then. I probably dived into my work um, to give me a belief that this is why you're doing it. You know, okay. it's her future, that everything that you're okay. going to be able to teach. Was that the right her. thing to do? No. So, so how, <laughs> how did you begin, have that self-awareness that throwing yourself into your work was probably not the best thing? Um, I think I had a, actually had a bit of a breakdown in the end. Okay. Um, I met up with my boss that was sort of sent me on this comment and we, he agreed, I think he was completely on the same page, that I should come back. Okay. and step back into what I was doing for him because it was quite a drain. What would you do differently next time? It's a difficult one because I'm really, I'm really glad I did do it. I, okay. But what I'd do differently, take her with me. <laughs> and again, now you're a single parent, she's nine years old. How are you dealing with that? Because now you haven't got the support of your partner. I do in that she is 50% of the time in his care, which there is goes. actually gives me a little bit more time probably because there's not um, school runs and school pickups and all those things okay. every day now. So it does give me a little bit more flexibility. But, um, but still there are times when she's with me where my work does demand my time and attention and I am working on it. And it, I think it's because it's a new business this year. Yeah. So it's um, taking up my time. Do you think that guilt is put on by yourself and probably in reality just everyone else is suffering from it and as long as you you know it's not about the quantity of time it's the quality of time that you yeah. spend with your little one. Definitely the quality. She does say sometimes now that she's nine and speaking up for herself she does say you're always working. Okay. So I do hear that from her which does weigh on me so I know I have to get a better balance and it might be the quality it might just not, and it might be that on the days that she is with me, I have to clock off. I have to be dedicated to my time with her as much as I'm dedicated to my role in the hours that I'm putting in for that. As long as you're aware of it. Yes, hey, definitely. Do the cracking job. All I'm going to say is well done. Thank you. And don't suffer from um, guilt. Be Gosh. aware of it. Just put your time and effort in and you'll be fine. Thank you for your time today. Thank you.